So next, let me introduce the code itself. Uh, what exactly do I mean by this three qubit bit bit code? Uh? Okay. So the code. So the code, like I said earlier, is really you are trying to encode the logical qubit, so a two-dimensional uh, state space, into your three qubit Hilbert space, which is eight-dimensional. Okay. So what it means is that I just need to specify the particular subspace that represents my logical uh, qubit, my two-dimensional subspace that carries the logical information. Huh? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the following. We're going to define 0 with an L. Okay. This L subscript stands for logical. So this is actually my logical qubit state 0. Okay. I will also have one that is for logical qubit state 1. You know. I want to write this in terms of my three qubit, my three physical qubit state. So the logical zero is actually just a three qubit state zero zero zero. Okay, very easy, yeah. And then my logical one state is just a three qubit state one one one. Okay, this is also why um, in the classical world people will call this the repetition code. Now you will hear people talk about the three qubit bit flip code as the three qubit repetition code as well. No? Okay, so this is the Logical state zero. Okay, this is the logical state one. Okay, now these two states forms a basis for my logical qubit. Okay, so essentially the code space, code space, which I write as C. Code space just means that two-dimensional subspace that carries your logical qubit. So the code space is simply defined as the linear span of these two states, logical 0 and then logical 1. Okay, we shall write in terms of this uh, three physical qubit space as the span of 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Okay, so any logical state for psi L yeah, is simply just some linear combination with some coefficients alpha for the state 0 and some other coefficient um, uh, beta for the state 1. Yeah, okay. And written it again in terms of the 3 qubit state space, this just means any state that is this is inside my code space. Yeah, okay. So that's the code space itself. So we have talked about the states. I also need to tell you about the operators, essentially the logical operators. These are the operators that manipulate your logical qubits, your logical information. So your logical operators. The identity operator. Okay, we shall write. Uh, so this is the logical identity, is the thing that does nothing on my code space. Yeah, logical identity. The fact that it's logical, I will put a bar on top. Yeah, you can also put an L below if you want. But my identity operator is the following uh, object. If I write it in terms of my uh, logical zero and logical one, is what you would expect. Okay, but I can again write this in terms of my physical three qubit. Uh, States and then this now becomes a three qubit operator. Is this particular three qubit operator? Okay. In particular, is a projector onto this two dimensional subspace for the three qubits. No? Okay. You then can have other things. You can have say the logical x operator. So logical bit flip. Okay. X bar, which is in the logical um. And the notation, this is what we have uh, from earlier already. So the x operator is something that flips the logical one, the logical zero, and vice versa. Okay, and then you can again write uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, plus 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and in fact, it's interesting to note that the following operator, I will write it as x bar, is equal to, this equal, I will come back and explain a little bit more. I can in fact write the following, yeah, 
Okay. And this, you see, is actually uh, pretty easy to understand why does this do a logical bit flip. My states are really spanned by 0L and 1L, which are the 0, 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, right? Okay. The logical bit flip flips 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. So if I want to look at these three states, I want to flip it to 1, I just apply x, x, x. Okay. So that's the x1, x2, x3 operator. It flips 0, 0, 0 into 1, 1, 1, and hence flips 0 to 1. Uh, one as the logical state, sir. Right? Okay. Now, why did I say I need to come back and uh, sort of look at this equal sign a little bit more carefully? Is the following: If you look at what I've written down here, and you write down your x operator for the first qubit, second qubit, and third qubit, actually you don't get this operator. Yeah. Okay. And this has to do with the fact that this is the version that I need in terms of what happens to the states that are inside my code space. Okay. In fact, you can add additional things here if you like. What do these additional things do? They act uh, on states outside of C. Yeah. Okay. And here, because you're talking about states outside of your C, they have no role to play in terms of the action on my logical states. Okay, so I have essentially the freedom to choose what these additional terms are going to be. One particular choice will give you this x1, x2, x3 operator. Yeah, okay, so this is why I've added a dot here in the sense that there is one logical bit flip operator in terms of what it does to your state space, uh, the state inside your code space. But there are many, many possible choices of the physical three qubit operator that will give you the correct operation on the code space, but it does something else to states that are not actually inside the code space. Huh? Okay, so this is one particular choice of it. You can actually write down several other ones. Yeah? Okay, you can of course uh, then also talk about the logical uh, phase flip, okay, which I will just write as the Z operator. Yeah, this is the operator that looks like zero minus one, one. Yeah, okay, and this is one where I can really write down three different, you can easily write down three different three physical qubit operators that still does the z bar operation and that's in fact z1 okay or I can do z2 I can do z3 okay what this is saying is that I do z on the first qubit and identity on the other qubits huh? and so on right so we see why is it that this does a logical z operator a z on the first qubit, what it's going to do is that it introduces, so I look at my two states on the three qubits for my code space states. So if I have a z operator on the first qubit, this zero just gives me a plus sign here. The state one here, the z operator on the first qubit gives me a minus sign. Okay? So this ZII, uh, Z identity identity operator does exactly what I want because it introduces a minus one to my logical one state, but it doesn't affect my logical zero state. Huh? Okay, and then you can check that the Z2 operator, the Z3 operator has exactly the same effect on my um, code space states. They differ, however, again, in terms of these additional pieces, what they do to states that are outside of the code space.